What's the word, y'all? Are we ready to start giving out awards? We're a week into the NBA season, so let's just start throwing them out there. There are a few things we got to get off right up rip, and I might say this multiple times in the video because every year when I do a first week awards, one month awards, people don't understand. This is not a prediction video. I am not saying based on the first week of the season, I think that in April, this person's going to win. That's lame. No, we're not doing that. I am saying that if the season were to end today, this is my MVP. This is my executive of the year because, yes, we're doing stupid and stuff like that and this is my most disappointed team that's not an award but it might as well be you know this is not a prediction video for the second time you got it great also remember there's only one award that i could give out so there's a lot of candidates for each one of these these awards so if you disagree that's okay we're just talking hoops around here and the person that you got number one might end up getting the monthly award in a couple more weeks leave a like subscribe and enjoy basketball let's get into it starting off with the mvp award let's get the heavy hitter out of the way in my personal opinion based on the first week of basketball i am giving an mvp award to damian lillard i don't have the upgraded stats because his game is still going on but they they yanked the starters but he ended with 31 6 and 8 and a plus 24 against the denver nuggets he also has two other 40 pieces on the season and he had one sneaker game that was the first game of the season but after that he has been absolutely lights out and the portland trailblazers are a surprising four and oh shout out to Anthony Simons for having the first big game of the season because before this he was shooting like 27 percent from three we all knew he's a better three-point shooter than that but today in that third quarter he was insane I don't really understand the Portland Trail Blazers right now because somehow they have a good defense with, with Yusuf Nurkic and, and Yusuf Nurkic matter of fact let me look at Yusuf Nurkic's numbers because I ain't looked at him but the eye test is telling me he might have the worst field goal percentage amongst seven footers in basketball that's not shooting threes I hate using this app or this website but nobody else hasn't upgraded so um oh the game just ended great so today he ended up with 13 and 12 i don't know what he shot from the field but overall on the season 33 percent today 40 percent before that 60 and 33 i just feel like he misses so many bunnies but anyway they got it done they also don't have Gary Payton II in the lineup, which is kind of important for defense. They've been able to put it together. Shout out to Damian Lillard. He is my number one. With every single one of these awards, I'm giving top three. So, Dame, here's your trophy. Let's get to the runner-up. The runner-up for my MVP is Jason Tatum. Actually, I got a tweet. Everybody watching this is an NBA fan, so you know all of the emotions that go into watching your favorite team. In the first quarter, Jason Tatum hit like 16 points against the Bulls, and this was my tweet. Here, man. Because the way he was hooping and the way he had hooped for the first couple games of the season, he just looked like the number one, the one number one cat. And, and then, <laughs> and then the Bulls came to play. Specifically, Alex Caruso got subbed to the game, and I took my MVP award back. And now he's second on my hierarchy because he ended up blowing this game. J.K. It wasn't him, but I mean, the team ended up losing. And stuff like that happens. Actually, this exact thing kind of happened to to them last season which was the start of their turnaround. I don't know if y'all remember that. They were up at like 20 points in the fourth quarter against the Bulls. The Bulls came all the way back and won that game. And then like a week or two after that, that's when the Boston Celtics turned it up and became basically the greatest team of all time for the second half. So this is not anything new for them, but Tatum has been amazing so far. I'm super impressed with his defense. Now, overall, the team defense hasn't been as great as you want it to be. And that's strictly based on the numbers. The eye test can be iffy. I mean, today it was bad. But like the other games, the eye test kind of told me, oh, they all right. And then the number said otherwise. I don't know. But Jason Tatum is a guy that could go out and give you 30, but also takes the responsibility to guard the other team's best player. And we're talking about a rookie here, but I still want to do this little antidote. Um, when they were going against the Orlando Magic, he took the assignment of Paolo Bancaro. Again, we're talking about a 19-year-old rookie. So, oh, is that that big of a deal? It kind of is because he's the best player on the Orlando Magic through the first couple games of the season. And today, he wanted to take an assignment in DeMar DeRozan, but it wasn't even like DeMar DeRozan taking the big shots or hitting the big shots. It was a collective. Shout out to Vu on his birthday 20 plus rebounds but second in my mvp will be jason tatum third is john morant oh memphis fans i already know you upset but listen hear, hear me out y'all did lose by 40 the other night i'm just saying you did lose by 40 and then it, there are a couple candidates that didn't make the list and it, it feels um disingenuous because how the heck have the dallas mavericks and the bucks only play two games on the season some teams have already played four you only got two Right, so Giannis deserves to be in this conversation, but he's only played two games. And Luka also deserves to be in this conversation, but he's only played two games. I know it's two versus three, but you get me, hopefully. So it goes Damian Lillard, Jason Tatum, John Morant. And John Morant gave us another performance. He continues to dominate the Brooklyn Nets. I think over the last couple of years since John Morant has got there, the Brooklyn Nets have not won a game against the Memphis Grizzlies. He continues to do this thing. And if you, you know, look past the 40-point um, loss to the Mavericks, 
which is still kind of crazy to me. Um, they're three and one on the season with a roster that I didn't think was going to be able to hold up as much as, as as they were last year, just because Jared Jackson Jr. is not there, and then they traded away some quality quality role players. They've been able to fill those voids. Now the defense is still not very good, but same time this year, last year. They had one of the worst defenses in basketball, but right now they got one of the best offenses in basketball, and a lot of that is John Morant. Shout out to Desmond Bain for the big game today. Those are my top three MVP candidates. Now we're going to get to rookie of the year. Now, I'm not, I don't want to pat myself on the back, but the top two players of the draft class so far have been two people that I predicted. Now, like I'm saying, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back because a lot of people understood that Paolo Bencaro went number one for a reason, and a lot of people understood that Benedict Matherin was a beast. Again, he got drafted and said, LeBron has to show me. LeBron has been on top of the league for 20 years. And Benedict Matherin was like, mm, not against me. And he has showcased that kind of energy. Now, how, who's number one? Who's number two? This is the way I determined it. I went based on the efficiency numbers. They're both averaging basically the same amount of points per game. But one thing Benedict Matherin has done is shot it better from three seven attempts per game shooting like 43 percent through the first week he's been dominant um tonight maybe not as much but he did have that crazy fourth quarter where he almost brought his team back but i mean look at these numbers from paolo he's been amazing too if you had paolo number one and benedict number two i couldn't be mad at you because both of them have been amazing one luxury that benedict matherin has over paolo is that he's not getting the other team's best defender every single night like i said jason tatum took it upon himself to guard Paolo and I don't think a lot of teams have caught up just yet to what Benedict Matherin has been able to do and maybe his numbers go down once the team does a scouting report but both players have been lights out so far and then my number three is going to have to be Jaden Ivey I was tempted to give it to Keegan Murray but he missed the first couple games because he got the virus um but the minutes he has played has been amazing so he'll probably end up in this conversation for sure I mean the team looks dramatically different when he's on the court shout out to him Jaden Ivey is averaging 17.7 five rebounds six assists 50 percent from the field 45.5 percent from three almost four attempts and people are questioning whether or not his jump shot was going to be real remember it's only a three game sample size but through the first three games that jump shot looks lights out those are my top three candidates so far Defensive player of the year. It, now, this might be the hardest one. How the heck do you determine the best defensive player in the league based on a two to five game sample size? This is what I came up with. Even though this team has not won a single game on the year, the Lakers defense has been pretty damn good. And though Anthony Davis still sometimes looks like he's lost a step, him at that five position has some pretty good protecting the paint. I think he's averaging like close to three blocks per game and he's also getting like two and a half steals and like i mentioned he is the anchor of one of the best defenses in basketball so i'm giving him the nod number two is Giannis. again only two game sample size but we know Giannis should be in this conversation every single season and just like the year before this or the year before that year before that we know that Giannis is an elite level defender number three is rough though i mean i'm looking i'm trying to look at stats i'm trying to remember games that i've watched and try to think about overall defensive impact and you know what? This might be one of those awards that, hey, we leave it at, at two and I'll open it to the public. You let me know. Most improved player. There's two real candidates when I think about this award based on the eye test. I ain't even looked at the numbers here. I'm going to go with Tyrese Halliburton as my number one. Actually, let me go look at the numbers. Now, Tyrese was a extremely popular pick going into the season for good reason once he got traded to the indiana pacers his points per game went from like 15 points per game to 19 he was averaging double digit assists and i mean i'm looking at his stats right here he's been incredible 24 points per game he's leading the league in assists and he also gives you 3.5 rebounds per those are insane numbers my boy and if we're comparing it to last season he was 15.5 last season to in totality and it jumped up almost 10 plus points and assists, he got one extra assist, rebounding better. The turnover numbers have not really changed, even though, you know, his responsibilities are higher. And three out of the four games, he's given you at least a double-double. I mean, this is by far, in my opinion, the guy that's the front runner for most improved player so far. I ain't really got no time for no arguments. Big, long shotgun, little like Larry marketing, baby. He's got to be number two. I mentioned him in yesterday's video. Even today, them boys almost won again, but the streak ends against the houston rockets i just knew, i knew it was i said it yesterday i knew it was gonna happen but he went from 14.8 points per game to about 21 and a half i mean he's still oh it's actually his three point numbers a lot lower than i thought it would be we know that's probably gonna go up he's been a career 35 ish three-point shooter um but for the most part he's making impactful plays on both sides of the floor something i didn't think i was going to be able to say about laurie marketing so he would be my number two jumping up from 14 or about 15 to about 21.
And lastly, a very underrated pick is going to be, why, why am I getting McDonald's and Shaq Big Podcast ads? Nick Richards. Nick Richards went from a guy that could not get on the floor through the first two years of his career. And then this year, he's getting way more minutes. I mean, not a ton. He's only getting 22 minutes per, but he's averaging 15 to 9. And I watched him yesterday, and this man was everywhere offensively and defensively. So a name that you might not have heard a ton in his NBA career so far is really making an impact on the Charlotte Hornets. Um, so he's my number three. So also thinking about De'Aaron Fox for his jump up so far. Um, Cause he's been lights out as well. I mean, 31, six and seven is insane stats, especially when he only averaged 23 last season. So he will probably be number three for real, for real. But I wanted to give love to Nick Richards. So shout out to him. I mean, low key, we talking about just straight up jump. You can argue um, De'Aaron Fox over Laurie Marketing. You know what I'm saying? So I was just kind of in the moment with Laurie because he is Laurie, but De'Aaron Fox, really good conversation. The more and more I look at these numbers, man, he's even hitting the three point shot. If he can keep, now he's not going to shoot 45% this season, but if he can keep up as an average three-point shooter, whoa, and unlock so much for De'Aaron. Shout out to him, man. I'm still rooting for them, by the way. I just don't believe in it. You know what I'm saying? They still got my heart, but I'm just saying I'm not invested in them anymore. That that's that was my problem. I invested. Every video I was talking about, Kings this, Kings that, and they started off 0-3. But, like, I'm still watching every night hoping that they win until they come to Chicago. Oh, six-man of the year is easily Christian Wood. I mean, Christian Wood is doing some crazy stuff in small amount of time. Here's my preseason pick. You know, he's averaging 25 and 10. Again, it's only been two games that they've played so far, but he's doing it in how many minutes? Tell me again, 25 minutes per game. He's averaging one point per minute on the court, and he's shooting 50% from three as a guy that's 6'9", power forward center, and he's also shooting 55% for the field. Everybody knew that Christian Wood can hoop, and everybody knew that Christian Wood can score, but he's doing it at a crazy clip through the first two games of the season, so he would be my uh, sixth man of the year. Other candidates, I mean, legit, it's probably Benedict Matherin. I'm trying to think of any other players that's been impactful off the bench. It's Benedict Matherin and a low-key guy, Jetty Osmond. I watched Jetty Osmond just give the Bulls the work. I might even go Kevin Love. Kevin Love hit like nine threes against the Bulls the other day, and, he, and the very next night, he also hit a couple more. It's between Jetty Osmond and Kevin Love. Tomato, tomato. Both of them have been really good for the Cavaliers so far. I mean, based on what we've seen so far, I think Coach of the Year has to go to Chauncey Billups again. Um, took a team that I didn't think would be able to defend anything, and they're doing that actively between the first unit and the second unit, so he's got to be number one. I'm giving Will Hardy the benefit of the doubt because they're 3-1 and one on the season, and the one game that they lost almost went into overtime. <laughs> and lastly, Greg Popovich. Every coach that exceeds the expectations for week one is getting love, and Greg Popovich, Will Hardy, and, and Chauncey Billups are the three guys. Now, I'm thinking about executive of the year. You know, I'm thinking about a team that made whatever trades needed to be traded and improved their roster. I forget who's who's running the Cavaliers. Is it Col Kobe Altman? Kobe Altman moved over to president. So Mike G G uh, G Gansey, whoever's running the team over the Cavaliers should probably win executive of the year. And I'm saying that because Donovan Mitchell has been one of the best players in basketball. They lost Darius Garland 20 minutes into the season, and it has not mattered whatsoever. They just had a back-to-back, -back, and Donovan Mitchell basically gave them 30-plus points in every single one of those games. And I guess Danny Ainge has to be in here, too. I mean, you, we traded away Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, and we're still better than some of the teams we traded them to, you know. Um, but that's it. That's Those are all of my awards. You let me know. I mean, there's a lot of people that I want to show love to, like Devin Booker has been hooping his butt off, but I, he ain't he can't win an award right now. I can't give a, oh, what about this guy every single time we do awards. So let me know in the comment section, and I'll see y'all soon. Peace.